Wouldn't it be cool if we could heal ourselves? If we were invincible like Wolverine, or the multi-headed Hydra from Hercules, who regrowed two heads for every one chopped off. Well, this isn't really just a thing of science fiction or fantasy. It turns out there are a ton of animals that can regrow different parts of their bodies, including the tiny striped zebrafish, who can regenerate parts of their fins, their eyes, their brain, spinal cord, heart, etc. The Mexican axolotl is super cute and can regenerate whole functional limbs after injuries. And perhaps the most remarkable of regenerators is the planarian. You can cut these aquatic flatworms into more pieces than you'd ever want to, and from each chunk, watch a whole new organism emerge. Okay, so if these little guys can do it, surely us remarkable humans can too, right? So, in the name of science, should I just... No! Don't! Definitely don't! No! Uh -uh. See, mammals like us humans aren't that great at regenerating. In fact, the best that we can do is regrow the idiot bits of our fingertips. This little... It's really not that much. And to be honest, it's a pretty gnarly process. But that's not to say that the cells in our bodies can't be regrown. In fact, you replace all the cells of your blood every two to four months. And the outer layer of your skin is replaced thousands of times over your lifetime. You lose about 200 grams worth of cells from the lining of your intestine every day. And you better believe those need to be replaced. And by the way, 200 grams is about the mass of a hamster. Our bodies can do this thanks to special cells called stem cells that can divide and make copies of themselves and all the other cells we need to maintain the different tissues in our body. You also have these stem cells to thank for building your body in the first place. These stem cells help to build all the different parts of our bodies before we were even born. And those same stem cells are still in your bodies today. You have stem cells in your eyes, in your blood, in your gut, in your brain, pretty much everywhere but these seem to have limitations. These stem cells can handle the everyday maintenance work of keeping our bodies healthy, but they don't seem to be able to make up for the large scale damage caused by lots of different injuries and diseases. At least for now, people all over the world are super excited about stem cells for the hope that one day they will be able to do this. For example, for my PhD, I've been trying to find different pharmaceutical drugs that can help to make these stem cells more active. Making the stem cells active is step one, for step two, I'm trying to map out how we can go from active stem cells to the different cell types in the brain that might be missing in injuries and diseases. I'll let you in on my secret to how I do this, but don't tell anyone. I actually just copy babies. I'm a PhD copying babies that aren't even born yet. What I mean by that is I make observations of the developing embryos. That's because the fetal and young brain is great at growing new cells. So if we can just figure out how it does this, we can teach those tricks to the older brains. While my research focuses on stem cells in the brain, other people are using the same approach for stem cells all over the body. We're doing this so that one day this type of stem cell based regenerative medicine can be a viable option for the millions of patients today without a cure. But thorough and quality scientific research is a slow process. So we need as much support as we can get from people like you so that we can turn this science fiction into plain old science. Can't teach an old dog new tricks, but can you teach an old brain baby tricks? Can you teach an old brain old tricks? Yeah, you can teach an old dog old tricks. So you can teach an old brain old tricks. That makes sense? That doesn't make sense. Let's move on.